Hello and welcome to another Mr. Beats White video and this one's a little bit different insofar as I have a helper in the form of Lils. Hello. <laughs> and um, you might remember in a previous video uh, back late last year, um, Lils has a Sony SL3000UB uh, portable, in inverted commas, portable uh, video recorder. and. Um, we got it going, changed the belts, um, gave it a bit of a service, and it's a lovely machine. The only thing with this is I did buy a 5 amp um, power supply, 12 volt power supply, and uh, a new DIN socket, um, DIN socket, DIN plug. Um, Why did it all up? But um, unfortunately, the power supply is such poor quality that uh, it's putting a lot of noise into the machine and it's coming out as um, a lot of noise on the um, picture. So, um, scouting around eBay, you've actually found the companion unit that would have gone with it back in the day. Um, it's, I suppose you could say it's slight overkill, um, but this is, um, this is essentially gonna be its power supply for it. Uh, it's quite a tatty uh, machine, I suppose. It's missing its door. I have given it a quick clean, but it's still not not wonderful. But we'll sort that. Yeah, we can clean it. Yeah, I'm a good give it a good clean. Cleaner. Yeah, and um, yeah, we'll go through it and uh, get it going. Now, I have never worked on one of these before. I'm assuming though that it's not that dissimilar um, to a C7. Um, power supply. Maybe it's got a transformer if it has grace. If not, it's a switch mode power supply and it'd probably be the same arrangement, I would have thought. Even though this really predates the C7 in its design, it's it's more like the very first um, SL8000 uh, full-size machine. Um, it was 8000 series. Um, the plugs are not wonderful. They, the K connector's pretty good. But this one... But the power like one, yeah, is the one we need. It's dying. Is really quite rotten. Um, and... We have a nicer one. We have a nicer plug that we can put on. So, um, that's good. That's handy. Just take off the power supply that I was going to use. So, um, without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so first things first, um, we have a really high quality um, plug here, uh, fitted by a true professional. In the uh, true vein of the day, uh, this is beautifully installed. Um, so I'm going to ask my assistant, here you are Lils, yeah, grab the plug and take, the, take that middle screw out. Okay. And place your bets now as to what fuse is going to be in there. I reckon it's going to be a 13 amp fuse. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't done this the, before. The, the main option is a 3 amp, 5 amp, and 13 amp. Um, 13 amp is pretty much what all plugs that were sold over the counter because nothing came with mains plugs on them back in the day. It's a fairly recent thing, actually. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, there we go. I take my hat off. Whoever fitted this might have done a terrible job with the core grip, but there's a 3 amp fuse. So it's 3 amp because it's red. Ah. So red is 3 amp, black is 5 amp, and brown is 13 amp. But what we will do, um, we're not going to use that. We'll, uh, we'll very carefully remove the plug. And, um, <laughs> yeah. I normally wouldn't do that over a machine, but I don't think this is really going to... It's already uh, it's got gonna, a bunch of scratches yeah, across you it. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, pressing it, I suppose. So, next thing, put that screwdriver to one side. Do you need the red one? I think so. Yay! So, yes. do you want to... Um, I don't know how this comes apart, actually. Just but, unscrew the screws. Yeah, mm. unscrew the screws and we'll see how we go. There's one there. On the bottom. Yeah, there's several on the bottom. Yeah. Do we need to take the uh, No, we won't. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. Go, um, yeah, so just put it by the side okay. there. I'm sure they'll all be the same. Yes. Oh, that one's rusted. Yeah, it is a bit rusty, but we can, we can treat that. It's fine. Yeah. First thing's to assess what the actual unit's like, because it, it might be just terrible. Um, yeah, we got lucky with 
with the, um, the machine. I mean, I, I chose that very carefully, to be fair, um, because it did look very tidy and looked as if it's finished paint and polystyrine, to be honest. Oh. I managed to get quite a lot of the paint off. But... I hate polystyrene. Yeah. It's gross. <laughs> okay, and then. Hello. Final screw, maybe. Might <laughs> maybe. Not be the, might not be the there final might be like screw. 62 screws yeah. hidden. Yeah. Nothing would surprise me. Okay, surprise so. Me. Oh, that's fucking hopeful. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'll have to come off, I guess. Yes, probably. Maybe. Don't know. Um. Um. Hello? Seems like this part's the part that doesn't want to come off. Yeah, I wonder if this screw is in the middle. Ooh. Uh, Maybe we, there's the screws here. Should we take these off? I reckon. Can I just grab that? I reckon it's that one that's kind of sunk there. And that one in there. How about in these holes? don't think they're used, or they could be for adjustments, or, I don't know. <laughs> Good question. None of us have done this, so... There we go. Yay! So it has, it's got long um, bits of plastic. So, so it has a transformer, that's encouraging. Okay. <laughs> um, and a massive smoothing capacitor. And a lot of rust. Yeah, there is rust, that's fine though. And it's looking sort of close. <sighs> yeah, that does not want to come out, sadly. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably replace these screws. But they are rust -free. rust free ones. And we'll give, probably give this. Oh, they doesn't. They're not slotted, so. Or the metal Sorry. metal assembly isn't slotted. So that's I've got fine. another one. I'll just take that one out. Well, the helper has a screwdriver now. It's not mine, but I'm holding it. So, nice big smoothing regulator, transformer. A so, it's a fairly, yeah, it's a fairly reliable power supply design. Very, very, um, not very, not clean. <laughs> Insulator board. And then. This feels as if it's not slid into the wrong, into the right bit, anyway. Which is sad. Um, That's got icky stuff on. <laughs> so it all looks, I mean, you can't, can't really yeah, see, I doubt, what I'm doing. But uh, I'm just looking, basically, at the quality of the board. In fact, let's, let's take it out. Um, I'm assuming... Would you like me to help? <laughs> Um, I'll probably just do these so I can get an idea still... of what they're like. The different sizes and they're colour coded. That's right, so it's that's a bit of a Sony thing. Um, generally, when when you take a board out, all the connectors are identifiable and unique. Yeah, so if there's one that's the same as it, it's probably going to be a different colour. That's right, and they match it up to the colour of the the socket that it goes on to, so... All the different shapes, so... It's not that common in consumer electronics to find that, so Sony seem to be very, very good. Let's not break it whilst we're at it, though. They're doing this. So we've got... That's a transformer connector. Okay. Okay. So that, that wires back to here. You can see a little cabling around there. It's very dirty. So there's the power supply. Um, it's a power supply. <laughs> yeah, it's a power supply, definitely. Some hot glue on there, that's interesting. Some use hmm. of hot glue. I don't... I think someone might have gone into this before we did. Uh, I don't know, that looks like it's from the factory. Hmm. Just a bit unusual to see it, to be honest. I guess we better recap it as far as we can, um, just for the sake of reliability. We'll check a few of the caps as well. And uh, if there's take any rusty 
If there's any rusty screws, will we take them out and replace them? Yeah, they will be replaced, yeah, as we go along. So, let's crack on. Okay, so we've had a look at all the capacitors we have, and I haven't done terribly well, unfortunately. We've only got um, four. Yeah, well, we've got more than four. We've got four different values. Yes. Um, so, this one, this one, this one, and this one. 100 microfarad at either 16 volts or um, 35 volts. So we're just going to put, is it 35 or 25? 35 volts. So we've got um, 100 at, what's that? That's, that's not this right. Is that's not the right one. So we've got the 100 microfarad, 35 volts, got a load of those, so we'll just change them all with that. We've got this one, which is 1000 microfarad, 35 volts, see that's considerably smaller, as these things tend to be these days. Um, got 10 microfarad, 50 volts, which I can't remember, I was that one. And 22 microfarad, which is that one. We so, do not need a 10 microfarad, 16 volts. No, I don't think we do. I think I was thinking, what was that, 16 volts? 16 volts. Yeah, so we could use one of those there as well, but we've got, we probably will use those actually. Okay. Maybe. We'll see. See what happens. We have choices. <laughs> we have choices. The Sanyo capacitors, um, these are 0.1 microfarad, and I haven't got any, so I'm going to leave those for now. Um, we could always buy some. And yeah, I'll get some more because I probably will need some for other Sony stuff that uses these Sanyo caps. We might even need to buy some more of just maybe the caps that are here. Yeah, maybe. maybe. We have it's, enough. it's fine. It'll oh. be fine. I'm, I'm fairly happy. So um, let's crack on and get these out. So let's start off with the thousand. There is glue. Maybe we'll have to use heated solder iron to get it out. Well, soldering iron is hot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's not use a cold one. That's no. Point. Yeah, let's not yeah. Let's go around whacking stuff with an solder iron that's not even on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's, let's do this one first. I'll do this, this, do this one because it's going to be bodged. Bodged? Bodged? So... <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do it over the machine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Keep faith. Faith. So just carefully pulling it away from the board without straining the opposing leg as much as possible. If it breaks, is that a big problem? Or... Um, not really, but... Do you prefer not to break it? It's... More about, um, it actually looks as if it might have been just starting to sweat. So there's a little bit of Good. something there, yeah. Maybe it's the glue that was attaching it started to melt. Uh, no, I wouldn't have thought. It's high it's temperature hot. glue. <laughs> so just tidy these up. And the Printed circuit board legend on these older beaters um, isn't so comprehensive. So you haven't got like the, the positive mark um, by the positive lead and the, this white circle for the negative, as well as this symbol. So um, yeah, it just does to remember how Sony label these up on these older machines, just put a bit of solder on there so it runs better. Oh great. So there you go, it does actually show you where the negative lead is, so there's a negative on there. Do you want to pop that, try and pop that in? Yeah, I, I don't which know. side? Like that. So that's it, yeah. Um, and that's spread the leg a little bit. Uh, it feels like it's breaking. It's fine, so what we need to do snip. is Bend them so they're not being strained where they enter the component. Mm. And um, because I have actually seen quite a few capacitors actually where that hasn't been done. And uh, they just snap? They, yeah, they become sort of intermittent. Mm. 
Sorry, not good with fancy lips. <laughs> so intermittent, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, do you want to solder that? Yeah. Got the thing, it's hot. Yeah, keep it away from plastic. So you need to get it more near the, that's it. Can I hold it? Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, that's all cross purposes here. Oh. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm not used to soldering. <laughs> That's it, oh, that's it. A bit more. Yeah, you're not trying to cut this off, you're trying yeah. to do the joint. Mm. So put the iron on the on the joint, on the solder here. So like that? Yeah, it's actually on it. So it melts it. She's on it. There we go. Perfect, Lego. Perfect. And then this one. So you're sort of doing it against the pad and the solder, ideally. So it runs from the pad, from the solder onto the pad. That's it. Perfect, that, that'll do. Stinky. <laughs> yeah, it is quite stinky. Also not particularly good for you. I mean, you're all right, because you're not in contact with it constantly. No. Unlike me. Sends, sends you mad in the end. Uh, I'm not far off doing that, I think. Oh. That's why there are so many of these <coughs> just lying around. That's around. right, yeah, they give you plenty of extra. So that's the first one done. Uh, what was that one? That was the 100 microfarads 35 volts, which we do have. Where should we put this? Uh, just put it down there. On the side. Yeah, that's fine. Along with the other things that are rusting or otherwise look like they need help. <laughs> yes. There we go. Just, just put a bit, of, a bit of heat on the pad and it's taking yeah. that little bit of contamination. So same again. Um, um, negative is the, towards way. the big bucket. That's it. Remember this one is a bit of a fiddle, isn't it? Yeah. So negative to the, to the big bucket. Yeah. This. Yeah, you're doing that again, are you? Yeah. Okay. I need to practice. Yeah, because he. It's sort of okay with the iron nail, but you need to hold, obviously, sol hold the solder. Oops, sorry, so take it away. Stuck. Take it away. Perfect. Look at that. Yay. Like you've been doing it for 50 years. No, I have not. I can feel like you're doing it for 50 years sometimes. In these week's capping episodes. <laughs> um, so that's done, that's done, that's done, that's done, that that's done, that's done, that's done. Yeah, we haven't got that. 10 microfarad at 250 volts. Um, I'll probably need to make a note these, of the ones we haven't got. What are they? They're these the 10. Are 10 microfarads and 16 volts. Okay, so let's do that one. There are only two. Cool. In this massive bag. Well, there were, there were a lot more than that in there. They probably got used up. Yes. I wonder by who. <laughs> yeah. Question mark, question mark. By you. Tiny, itty bitty, tiny. As big as a two. Two. Child's two. That is. Small one. <laughs> random. No, it is tiny. It really is tiny. Uh, to be fair, I'm probably going to edit a lot of this out. Then to be fair, I might not. So, what uh, means that the that final one. two? Are there two on uh, the Uh, just one. Oh, sad. That one's now lonely. <laughs> yeah, I'm not terribly convinced capacitors have feelings. I know. Sometimes the way they go pop. Yeah, see, even that looks a little bit, like, stressed. It looks so. sad. <laughs> So, okay, so um, negative on this side. Go like this. Yeah, I believe that's right. If it's standard, it's, which it is. It's not going in. Yeah, so it's the best effort with that. I'm fairly happy for that just to be like that. 
Um, what are you, are you soldering or are you I'll ironing? Yeah, it might be the end, it's hot. So, do you want to hold it? How you want to hold it? Like How you want to hold it? Just might keep it away from plastic. Because it melts it really, really quickly. Where do we need to get out of here? Hang on. The just got taken a bit there. Yeah. Lovely. That's it, get it on the pad, lovely. It needs to be on the pad, yeah. not the solder. Sorry. Yeah, it's burning all the plugs out of it. Oh, sorry. Well, you've sort of done it. Yeah. Let's just have a little look. I'm sorry. No, it's all right, it's <laughs> fine. Absolutely cool. It's just because the what helps it run, obviously, is the flux and makes it um, run really well onto the pad and, and onto the joint, which is what you want to get a good mechanical and, and electronic connection. Yeah. But if the, too much of the flux goes, you get like a bubble. What? It goes like a bubble, bubble. like this is gone. Oh, sorry. And um, no, it's fine. I mean, it probably would have been okay. Um, but um, with time and movement and, you know, just me using it. Yeah, use it would. So that I'm not doing much better. Mm -hmm. There we go. To be fair, that was one of the pads that didn't seem to like to take any solder at all. So, um, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. You actually did all right. Yeah, you did well. There's one oh, singular wash-up and something else. Yeah, it's fine. That just keeps wandering over there. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. Shredding. It might not have even been your hair. Maybe it was. If it was long. Right, so that's that. So we need to find a 22 and a 47. Okay. So let's do that. Oops. Okay, so the 47. 47 microfarad. 25 volts. So where's that one? No idea. <laughs> so that's there. How do you know exactly where to put the iron? Um, partly because of the legend on the board. So I know. Like, that's the only capacitor in that little area there. So it's below that connector by that one. It's so look underneath. <laughs> so connector, connector, only capacitor, it's that one. Um, you do get, once you've done a lot of this, which I have done, obviously, yeah. over the years, you sort of just do it. It's almost like a, an automatic thing. We've got the capacitor. Oh, I've got it. Yeah, you've got it. I have it. So, 47. Do we need to trim trim? We will do. Do you want to do that? I have no idea where the ye ones to cut are. Oh, uh, look. To my side. Okay. Do we solder this or are you going to solder it? Um, I'll do the this. Yeah, go on in. Sounds like a plan. So, okay. yeah. Is it take it away? And then, lovely, perfect. Maybe a little bit much, but that's fine. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's how you learn. Schnip, schnip. You know, in 20 years' time, if it goes wrong, you'll say, oh, I remember when I wasn't, I was still learning how to solder, and now I'm a total expert. Okay, no, so um, trip, it, trip it, trim it, <laughs> and sort of to the, the bottom of the... Not your hands. Yeah, where it goes right above where the solder is. Okay. Uh, so I not, can't actually see. So I'm not trying to right there? lower it as low as you can. There. That's it. Lovely. And the same with that leg. Just so it doesn't fall in the machine, really. Because like you say, we shouldn't really be doing it over the machine. Yeah. Uh, so 22. Do you want to get a 22 out for me? Okay. And I'll um, whip. Whip this one out. Super. So let's do a very quick check of a couple of these. Okay. So, They're probably awful. <laughs> Honestly. One and three. Multifunction test. Um, 
Two, C, one. Testing, testing, still testing, and... Passes, reckons it's 24. 1.6 M ESR, so it's not terrible, but it's not great. It should be a 22. So, let's try another. Next. So what's this? Okay. This should be 10. And is it? This is... 11. Is that good or bad? Actually, that's a pretty good capacitor. I mean, the other thing about it as well is when you put heat on a, on a capacitor, if it's a little bit borderline, the heat actually helps reform them. Oh. Um, so they, you know, you can take a, you can actually take a really physically leaky capacitor out sometimes and the heat and getting it out. This one looks sad. Makes it uh, better. So 40, 49, there's actually a 47. Um, low ESR, so that one was probably okay. But it's, it's always better just to change them, they're newer and they probably won't leak. Possibly. Um, I have had problems with new ones to be honest. Uh, this but... just fell off into my hand. Okay. Keep it away from the machine. This one looks scared. So, 105 it reckons that is, it's 100. They're all reading a bit high. To be honest, yeah. let's try this one. This one looks because a couple of them, yeah, that looked a bit leaky, didn't it? Yeah, possibly. But we it's don't either know. leak, yeah, it's either leaked, leak, leaked, leaked a little bit, or flux. it's just from being well, it's just from being stored, or it could even be from. Oh, I think that's some fat on this thing. Oh, great. <laughs> that's fine. Um, yeah. So, well, interesting. Um, I mean, this this one has leaked slightly. And these, this one is okay. This one has leaked this a fair bit. It's all right. All these legs. Yeah, you say it looks all right, but can you see around the leg there? Oh, yeah. You see, it's almost like a fluid's been there. Yeah. And that could well be that's leaked. So, um, and what they will do is they'll leak a little bit and then seal themselves up again. So healing an injury super fast. Not necessarily <laughs> doing a job. Of, yes. So uh Well we'll just I'm just gonna nice. clean these up a little bit. In fact what I'll do is I'll I'll give these a good clean in a bit. Of course we're doing all of this without even testing it, but I am fairly confident it does actually work. Yeah. So um, at least in part. It looks like someone's old attic and they've just forgotten about this Yeah, machine. I'm sure it is just, it's been up in an attic and it's been or a down and sold. It was very cheap, really, this unit, as far as beta stuff seems to be these days. Um, I think I paid £20 for it. That is cheap. And I think it was £20 including the postage. It's not a light item. Um, so. Someone probably just found this. I was just like, it's probably really dirty inside this. It was an auction, so it was whatever people were willing to pay. Um, and nobody's willing to buy it. Mainly because it is quite shabby and also because it's. I don't think there's an awful lot of these machines about the, the 3000. Um, yeah anymore and the ones that are about are already complete units so uh, there is a bunch of dust down in the bottom and i really want to get to it that might be a, a job for a vacuum cleaner oh yeah the brush on or using a brush and a vacuum cleaner <laughs> got it so that one goes there. I should have asked you to do this. Yes, you should. Do you want to do the rest? Yeah. It's a bit of a fiddle. The big one goes there. Yeah. But I'm going to put the black one. Yeah. No, I should start from this side. Well done. That is a top tip you've just worked out for yourself. Oh, great. I'm glad. That's okay.
Take it out, put it back in. Mm. Huzzah. Everyone loves you getting to be stabbed. Careful. Be a bit careful you don't bend you the pins. Try? I tried. That's cool. Now quite This sort is of tiny. Awkward. Tiny and awkward. Oh no, I don't want to. That's fine. Can you do that? It's a little bit. They're, they're quite These are solid, tough. yeah. <laughs> Stick in my head. Not even a smart one. Okay, so push that down. Let's fill in that slightly. Just, uh, there we go. And then we've got this, which is a board of some sort. Interesting board. It's um, it's an insulator board. Yeah, it's just to insulate the the heat sink here, which is chassis ground from the um, from the actual power supply itself. Uh, thing is, I can't remember which way around this went in. Oh great. Because it does seem to be... Shall I use this to dry clean it? Uh, you can try. Because these are quite small spaces, maybe this will be better at getting in. Uh, no. Like I said, this is my machine now. <laughs> It is. So, so let's try and get this in. Okay. Tense. Well, I think it goes that way, so let's I just grab see. that. And there is actually a rail quite a long way down. There's a rail for it to locate into at the, the, the back here, uh, which you won't be able to see on the camera. <laughs> of course. Because it's just way. Deep down, I mean, I can't even see it the to be fair. Depths of the machine. And even though, let me see if I've got that right. I think it goes that way. Well, let's try it this way. I don't think it goes this way. <laughs> let's try it this way. Yeah, it does. Yay. There you go, because I said it didn't, it, it fitted. Mm. The machine's a little bit like that. Wants to prove me wrong. Um. Also, this is one of the screws that was very rusty, and it is very rusty. Yes. And not particularly. Nice. Yeah. Can I just try one more time to get this out? It's it's totally. I mean, that's the wrong screwdriver anyway, mm. and you're tightening it. But the head's starting to go on it. Uh. Uh. <laughs> no, that won't go. It's just so rotten, but it's fine. I'll test it for for um, integrity as we go along. Super. So, um, next thing is to change the socket. The socket. I keep calling them sockets. Change this plug. <laughs> put a mains plug on it. Put a new one on it. Um, and uh, give it a test, I suppose. So, time to look at this connector, first of all. Uh, Lil's is sound asleep now. It's quite late at night. Just going to get this plug sorted, if we can. Let's take this apart. I don't know whether this is original Sony, you know. It just doesn't look particularly refined to be Sony, um, but well, I suppose we'll see. And it's just because this is scrap. Well, I didn't dig that into my hand, that's why it's a bonus, I suppose. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, it's just certainly not so neat. Although, that's quite tidy. 
The uh, main reason I want to take it apart rather than just cut it clean off is to see what the actual uh, cabling's like because, as you remember, or might remember from the, um, the 3000 uh, 3, SL3000 video, um, yeah, this is genuine Sony by the looks, maybe. I don't know, maybe you can tell me in the comments what was the connector like on these. But uh, yeah, you might remember that I sort of um, worked out how all of these um, connectors go. You can see by this that it's actually quite, um, quite different to what I assumed. Oh no, this is a cleaned my meter. Oh, the battery's going flat though. I left it on overnight. <laughs> clever wasn't it? Um, right so they're not common. So what are they? So red, red, stripe, yellow stripe and these two appear to be the same except they're not. Oh, that's going to make it fun, isn't it? Um, Sharpie. What's I going to put? Mark on there. And no mark on the other one. That's probably the best way, isn't it? So I'll put the extra marks on, they get rubbed off and it's going to cause confusion. So, mm. I mean these need to be good because obviously there's um, all the power for the um, 3000 going through that. So, then put this on. Just a bit I always love to forget to <laughs> put on. And then, of course it's been great. Pain when I realise I have missed it and soldered all the connections on and wonder why. Why would I do that? Right, so that's all done. Um, a bit of a battle really to get it all together sort of nicely and, and without any real problems with um, shorts and whatever. I did put on some heat shrink on each one to sort of duplicate what uh, Sony had done on here. I mean these are PVC sleeves. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's all looking good. So um, the way it goes, so looking at it from from here, if I turn this over, two pins that are closest together, i.e. the top, so there's the key at the bottom. Looking from the back, the left one is yellow stripe. The bottom left one is the um, red stripe, orange stripe. Then on this side, you've got two that haven't got um, any colour coding, but the top one is the thinner of the two. So thin white, thick white. So thick white is towards the key. Orange stripe is towards the key of the, the socket. So yes, all good. I'm confident I've got that right. Uh, mm. Yes. So the next thing I'm going to do before I power this up, just because I'm, I don't know, <laughs> I like things to look nice um, as, as much as possible. I'm going to try and remove the front. Um, <clears throat> now this is a little bit interesting in so far as it looks like if I undo the screw, this screw, 
bearing in mind I don't have a manual. Um, I wonder if I actually do somewhere. I might do. So I did find a lot. Well, that seems fairly hopeful. And then screw under here. So this is the central screw closest to the, the front. But that's no, it's not. That's not enough at all. So I'm taking out. Mm, that doesn't seem to do anything either. Uh, there are clips. Um, it just felt like there should be. screwdrivers like that. Oh, no, that is it. Ah, right. So I was right. So these So it's the outer two, the inner one stays. So let's put that back in there. So the outer two close to the front. Well, that play ball. Oh, there's a bit of heat shrink I lost, which I probably would have edited out, so you won't know about that, so I'll keep quiet. Um, uh, I thought I'd taken that out. Am I going mad? Oh, I did. Um, maybe this one needs to come out. To me, this feels like a chassis screw. Oh, maybe. So that's gone tighter. Now I've moved that. There we go. So that's out. And then I just want the clock display basically, so I can give it a good clean. Uh, so that looks like a screw here. Screw here. I wonder if those buttons are any good. They actually feel okay, but uh, whether they are, um, are they better quality than on the um, C7? Let's get this off. A bracket for the top cover. Is that enough for that to come out? It should be. It's actually pretty clean to be fair. I suppose relatively it's fairly well um, fairly well protected. So I think we are somewhere near. That looks great. Oh for a door. Uh, looks like it's a clip end door as well, so I just need the door really, which would be really nice, but we'll see. See if we can find one. So it's got one of these things that can put out the channel numbers to rearrange them as you so wish. Something that was fairly pointless in the UK to be honest. Line tuner. And I think, is that, oh, that appears to be nothing. I'm guessing that's probably the clip for the door, but I don't know, <laughs> no idea. So, I suppose the next thing is to try.
try it. Okay, so let's power it on. That's looking pretty good. So let's try it with the uh, SL3000 and see if we actually can get this to all work. So, so far so good. Got a raster, that's cool. Um, we're on. And have a Kodak tape here. I'll do this one-handed. Don't really think this through, did I? So it's loaded. Uh, you have no real movement. Oh, it's on pause. And I can't unpause it. Ah. How odd. What are you looking for? It's constantly in pause. Hmm. So, it does work. But I do have a problem insofar as with the deck connected, the um, TT3000 connected, it goes straight into pause and I can't take it out of pause. But if I unplug the connector, it works. If I plug in the connector with it in pause, it will unpause, play the tape, and I get a picture, albeit black and white because my TV is playing up still, bless it. But uh, yeah, really odd. So there obviously must be something possibly to do with the timer, maybe. Um, but there's something that is basically putting the pause on by default and not allowing me to take the pause back off. So, uh, yeah, let's investigate that. It's arrived. Yay. So, um, already started looking into this a little bit more in depth. And, um, yeah, so basically pin five um, is constantly at short when this is on and uh, the TT, no not a TT, what is it? What is this thing? SL? SL3000. <laughs> so pin 5 is constantly short um, when this is on and the, the um, SL3000 is connected. So once we get that side sorted this is good to go. Um, and, um, yeah, we can uh, have a little play with it then. Uh, I have actually also got the camera for it, um, which is the HVC3000P. Now, this wasn't... The 3000P is the second generation of um, Betamax cameras that um, was available. And it was available um, all the way through the life of the... Uh, well, 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 early on in the life, anyway, of the F1 as well. Um, there were two models, the 2000P and the 3000P. 3000P has got better um, low light um, sensitivity, so yeah, just a bit better. Um, I will do a separate video on that though, so I'm not going to go too much further into that. So let's go. Let's go, go, go. So let's go, Gonzola. Uh, Oh, 
Right, so let's see what's actually happening on pin five um, and compare that to the circuit diagram. So we will need to plug it in, uh, which is here. Yeah. And we have the lights. Light. And let's just put that up there. So on pin five, so pin one is to the top left, I believe. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, second row on the left. And there's no voltage. Now, is there continuity? Uh, continuity? No. Okay. So, uh, yeah. It would be preferable if that did not happen. So. Yes, right, so, looking at the manual, it's so much easier, easier when you're looking at a digital copy, these sort of things. Looking at the manual, um, pin 5 here goes to um, position 190 on the circuit diagram, and that follows all the way up here, all the way around here, all through here, to... S609 up here, and you can see here pin 2 on S609 is remote, and it is an orange wire by the looks of it. So, orange wire. the uh, next thing is to have a look at that. Orange wire. So, S609 is on board T2W21. And I didn't have a clue where that was. <laughs> so, very helpfully, Sony have given us a nice diagram, like they always do in their manuals. And you can see here uh, where Lils is pointing, W21 T2 is this board here. So, uh, let's move this out of the way, and it is this board here. So, um, now, the arrangement in these is actually quite cool. Um, so you've got things like boards here that are on slide out rails that clip in and same with the top here these just need to be pulled out and... possibly i mean we, we did find when we were looking at this board um you've actually got quite a lot of flexibility to sort of pull it out without necessarily having to undo them i mean we had to undo one yeah. to get it out um and then could reconnect it once we sorted out the cabling so um yeah, let's, let's. So if we try and pull this out, so Lils, do you want to yeah. uh, pull that tab back just enough? I'll pull this one. Okay. And then it should start to slide out. I think we might have to take some of the yeah, pegs. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, but usually a little bit of a. A jiggle wiggle and can we actually see which is 609 there it is pins um connect to 609 yeah. which is that one there and there's the orange cable and where you pointed i think oh no you pointed here somewhere didn't you yeah. huh? yeah. okay you pointed there did you yeah. i think i don't know somewhere somewhere around there you weren't far off anyway there's the orange cable um, so you're sort of random pointing. Um, so I think what we need to do now is get, um, get Barry. Connect this up. So we've got, we've got it in a real life sort of functioning thing. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit more clumsy on the older ones. The the F one had a connector, a multi-connector on the back, didn't use this. 
I like it better here. It's yeah, it's, it does a job, doesn't it? So that's that. Um, lovely. Uh, we'll just grab tape, any tape. Okay, so um, I've printed out from Palsite the connector pinouts, and it's initially it actually didn't help at all because this is actually wrong. <laughs> Um, so it says these pin descriptions refer to the connections at the video end of the cable. So it's referring to I'd, this. I'd assume it's it's the, the K connector here. But it's not. But it isn't. It's actually it's, it's actually the plug, um, which is that way round. What also didn't help was when you look at the circuit diagram. I was looking at the plug as if this is from the plug side, from the front, and it's not. And actually, it's fairly obvious that it isn't because the wires are going in to the back of the sockets. So, uh, yeah, so that threw me a bit as well. So what we found, yes. knowing that, is that we have um, 13 odd volts coming out of pin 13 on here, which is actually on the right hand side, not the left hand side, but the right hand side. The left hand side is ground, pin 14. And the corresponding pins here, um, pin 14, uh, which is that one on the right, right at the bottom there, pin 14 is ground, and that indeed checks out. Um, that. Prove it. Yeah, so Wrong one. doesn't matter. Um, so if I put that in there, Nils is just touching that on chassis. So that's ground. That that proves that it is a mirror image. And basically, this lines up flipped. with this. And if you're looking plug. at this at the machine, it's flipped. it's flipped. So yeah, that that suddenly makes sense. So, checking continuity between pin 13 on here and uh, where there should be 13 volts on um, S, what did we say it was? S, is it? Yeah, S609. Um, there is a break in continuity between this and that. And there is very little, I mean, literally, there are no components between here and here. This is wired directly to this. So, um, my thought is there has to be a break in the cabling, and my feeling is that um, it's going to be in here. So we're going to have to try and take this apart. Uh, so after quite a bit more head scratching and taking this apart, we did get it apart in the end. Um, a bit of brute force and some plus gas. Um, basically, couldn't get this apart. It's it's moulded round the um, the connections and then basically called this is just a cord grip but um in fiddling about and cleaning it all up i now have um 13 volts on pin 3 of s609 um so that's working but it's still stuck in pause so that was a bit of a red herring in some ways i mean the, the this this knows that that is working but that has no effect whatsoever on the actual Paul's fault. So, um, looking at this, and can you remember where the circuit diagram was, Phil? Was it, was it on or back? Was it back? It was back. Was it? I think it was like three something, three five or something. Okay. Here somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's too, oh. yeah, that's too far, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. And oh, is that it? oh, that's the power supply. That's what I thought we wanted. No, it's the um, I think it's T2 board. There, right? Yeah, because that's that's, it. that's the T2. It's a T2 W21, is it's it on. here? Yeah. On, is it? No, 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 it's it. Is it?
Z2, yeah, it gives more information there on the socket. In fact, that, that's what I should have been using because it's got the camera connector and then it's got the, the this connector as well. So, yeah, just uh, leave it for now because we'll do some more tests, maybe, <laughs> possibly. Um, so T2W21. So T2W21. So we're back at this. Okay, so let's whip this board out. Do some checks. Check the transistors. Um, and stuff. How far can I get this out, do you think? Before I run out cable. Very well thought out of Sony. And I think we found the problem. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh. Okay, so in common with a lot of other um, Sony's, it's got a backup battery. And that backup battery has leaked everywhere. Oh. Um, so I don't know why I didn't think of that before. That was yeah, so it's sort of taken all of that circuit. Can we fix? You. <laughs> Maybe. Um, right, have you got the have a white cutters, please? Please? Lovely. I don't know why I didn't think about the possibility of there being a backup battery. Uh, it's warm as well. So all the time we've been playing, we've been just gently cooking <laughs> cooking the contents of the battery out. Well, that was smart, wasn't it? I, I don't know. I think I, I think I just felt that there was probably um, a capacitor in here instead of a battery. So let's say there's a battery on the circuit diagram. Did some, has someone, has anyone ever been into this machine before? Probably. Mm -hmm. so it is actually voltage across it. Wow. It's actually 1.5 volts still across it. So I better not, I uh, better be a bit careful with that because it's, I don't want to short it really. So. Green. So you can see it really is quite green. Quite nasty. Let's lift the track there. Uh, so well, let's give it a clean and see what happens. So, um remove the battery and um Yeah, it's a fairly good. Oh, that's broken. I'm going to have to replace that. It's actually rotted through. So, yeah, I'll need to change that. Um, that one I'm not so worried about because that's just to the battery, um, which obviously doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> um, but that does matter. Uh, yeah, so I need to solder that, solder a new link in there, so I shall do that now. So that's now repaired, uh, not the tidiest job in the world, but it does a trick. Um, I'm going to put this back together and hope it works. Uh, if it doesn't, I probably will end up just taking that orange wire out, um, because really, I need to replace this board and it's going to be almost impossible to find one of these in decent condition. I mean, probably they're all going to be like this. Um, I have made up the joints again. Um, I've cleaned up the board as best I can. So uh, yeah, let's 
pop it back in and see what happens. Uh, I'd like to think it couldn't be any worse <laughs> than it was. And hopefully it'll be a whole lot better. That slides in there. I think that's right. And I've managed to snag a wire. That's fine. And we'll turn this round so we can see what's going on. Looks like everything's plugged in. It's always good. Plugs caught. So. some power uh, which goes that way around yeah and it's still it's still in pause um, I think that part of the circuit board is just too far gone um, oh, it's a shame isn't it Yeah, uh, yeah, so executive decision, I'm going to, for now, anyway, I'm going to disconnect that wire, and um, yeah, that's fine, it's, I'd rather just not use that part of the circuit, um, as it is bad. Yeah, so that's it, it works. Um, so what I've done is I've cut, there's a jumper just below here that links um, from the orange wire there through to the, the circuitry for pause. Um, it probably means that if I plug a camera into the front of this, pause won't work. Um, but hey ho, that's, that's life. Uh, Yeah, because it comes straight from the socket. So, yeah, that's um, that's it really. Uh, that is working, which is fantastic. And I can pause it on the front of the machine, which is great. Um, so, that's all good. And then we need to find connectors. But the unanswered question is why? <laughs> uh, not why on earth have I bothered? <laughs> uh, although you could argue that's also a valid question. But um, what, what else does that pause do? Does it indeed pause it on a timer? So there we have it, all back together and working well. Um, obviously, we've had to sort of bodge, modify, let's call it modify the board a bit. Just taking that part of the circuit that was uh, causing problems due to battery leakage out of circuits. Um, I don't like doing that. It's sort of, it doesn't feel like I've completed the job then and isn't really how it's intended to work but soldering with all that uh, battery leakage is just it's it's not worth it it's it's horrible stuff um the fumes are terrible so um just that little bit that i did was was pretty awful so uh yeah i think that's the best workaround so we're all up and running uh, just on some closing credits there and tv program and uh yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's working really well. And pause works. So yeah, not too sure about the battery meter. That seems to be doing all sorts of crazy things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so are you happy, Lils? Yes. So you've got Gary and Barry working. 
which is really nice. Gary? No, Barry and Gary. That's right. So, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Farewell. Oh.